Welcome fellow haters of the blue to my channel. In this tutorial you will learn how to paint this wood effect on your shields. I really hope you like it and let's get cracking. As you see here I only applied all the all the base coats because that's that's very very boring to see and I thought you will um, rather have a short video just Slap the coral over until it's solid. What else can I say? Uh, when I start painting this this kind of of double color shield, I like to lay all my colors and then I start painting the uh, the one that has the worst coverage. That would be the green. So I will paint all the green, then reapply the red to clean up, and then I will paint the red very carefully. If I painted the red first and I mess up, which I also always tend to do when I paint in the first lines, uh, you will be uh, having a lot of trouble to cover up with that with the green. So let's start with, with the green. Uh, we will apply a wash of built and green all over the piece. It's very simple. It's just wash and dilute it. So apply the wash, don't care too much about the red, once the wash apply, applied, I like to clean up the center a bit, to feather it out, just leave your, your brush in the water, wipe the excess off, and that's it, let, let, we will let this dry and apply a second coat to reinforce the shadows on the edges. Once the wash is dry, uh, we will apply a second coat. This time we'll do it more as, as a glaze. So we want to cover all the green. Like so, nice and dark and all that green. Nice. As you can see, the wash is now dry enough. And we will now define all the wood panels on the shield for the green. For this I'm using uh, Vallejo Gaming uh, Black Green. Uh, if you don't have Vallejo and you want a uh, Citadel alternative, I would probably use uh, Caliban Green mixed with black or Built and Green mixed with black. Do is just freehand. We start for the middle line. I will probably do this a couple of times to build up the intensity. Don't worry too much. This this line doesn't need to be extremely thin. I see I'm being very sloppy. I don't really care. I will define all the wood panels better with the next step. I'm just laying where the wood panels will be. Okay, now we have our ink uh, dry, we will start redefining all the wood panels. As in the previous step, I like to start with the center. As you see, I made a whole line, so I know more or less what the center will be. And now it's the time to thin all those crazy wide wood panels. You see this color is a bit thin. I start with a line on each side. And then start picking up the green. The key here is doing the wood green as random as you can. Just like that. I will do this on the panel to see, so you can see how thin I leave the other one. As you can see, 
I've re I applied all the wood uh, grain. It's very subtle at the moment. It will get more intense in the next step. Uh, but uh, the most important part is that you see that the the lines that looked very sloppy are now very well defined. They are thin. Make sure they are as even as possible. It's not really that important because it's meant to be wood and wood won't be perfect, even, but the, the more even it is now, the better for the end result. Now I will, by the way, I forgot to say, it will should have been a, a graphic, uh, some part of, this, of the screen, but that was a warpstone glow. That is the base coat. Now we will apply mood green. I will thin this to a, what I call a heavy glaze. This paint should be thin enough that it flows nicely and doesn't cover too much. We'll start again in the center because I like it. It will just hit all those lines that were defined in the previous step. I like to start with the ones in the edges of each wood panel. of them. Like that. I will do the same in all the panels and I'll probably reapply a second coat to build up the intensity just in the center panels. And I will try to leave this one. I will do it on the next panel so you see where I'm going to do it. I will thin the paint a bit more and apply it just on the edge panels so it builds like a gradient. Let's see. Like this. Like this. Like this. And we'll do the same on the other half. And then probably reapply in the center panels like this. Another coat. Just in most center parts to build effect, the 3D effect, a bit more. And you see we have the shield now highlighted with uh, mood green. And then for the next highlight we'll mix 50-50 mix of mood green and dawn yellow. And I will try to apply this just in the most center parts of the shield. This will help, as I said, bring kind of 3D effect. But now that it's dry, we'll just apply a little bit, very thin glaze of Waywatcher Green. Look how lovely that is. That's perfect. And now we will apply it while we're red again. You can see uh, behind the lines there where the red should be. It should be really easy to just do. Thin your paints. I'm using Mephiston Red, which is probably one of my favorite paints in the entire world. And we will just try to do it. We can, you can see here in the edge where it finish, and here where it has the previous mark. I would like to do my central line first. Use your whole brush to do a straight line, so it will be easier. And then we can just push the paint down to cover over. Now we'll apply the wash, this is Caribou Crimson, we'll apply it, as you, I will show you, you can do it both ways, doesn't matter the, the order, we'll apply the, the overall wash now, and then we'll apply a wash just in the recesses, in the corners, 
Now we have to be very careful, as you see. Just apply the wash. Try to be careful not to mess up the green, because if you mess up the green now, it will be a pain to put it back together. First coat of Carabao Crimson is dry. And then we'll apply a second one. We'll apply it, as you see, on the edges, just on the corners. And then I clean my brush and feather it out. So it's nice. Once the wash is, second coat of wash is dry, again we will just define the panels. For this, I'm using a mix of uh, Vallejo Gaming Black and Gaming Red in uh, two parts of, of red and one part of black, because black is very intense. And we will do the same as we did on the green. Not being careful, just applying it. Be very careful though when reaching the green. Thin it and we will apply the wood panels. Be very careful on the green. Use the guidelines. Start on the edges. I will work upside down because it will be easier for me. You want to move your brush in the direction you want your highlight. So I want my darkest red next to the border and my most intense red next on the center part. So I start moving the brush there and finish where I want the most intensity. That way, if the paint is thinned appropriately, you will get an instant gradient with very little effort. Okay, we have Amethyst and Red now done, and we will move to the first highlight. This will be uh, Evil Sun Scarlet. Again, I will just turn the shield upside down so I can work as you should from dark to light in a single brush stroke with a heavy glaze. Consistency. Again, from the darkest point to the lightest point, from the darkest point to the dark point. Oh, whatever. Yo, you know what I, what I just said. So, next highlight will be Wild Rider Red. It's like an orangey red. Very desaturated, very nice. And again, from darker to lighter, concentrating more in the central part of the shield. Let's look at here. And on the edges of the wood panel. If you mess up the red and you go into the green part, which can happen, we will just tidy up later. Like it. The last highlight will be using a cadmium flesh tone. Uh, I don't want to use. I don't like to use a white or to highlight red. That's why I use a flesh color because it's, the, I think, the nicest for a very natural look. If you want very intense red, like a very regal looking red, you can use yellow. For a fiery effect, but I think flesh tone is better for that effect. It will desaturate the, the look of the piece, and I think it look it look quite nice. Again, we turn it upside down. We very light with this color, just the most extreme highlights. As you can see, 
the paint is quite thin. This is almost a glaze. Not quite, but almost. You can apply, I think you will apply a glaze of blood leather. But if you like it like this, maybe it will make for a look like a very faded wood, which is nice. Now, start in the middle, find a line and push the color down. As you can see. So there you go, guys. I painted the the rim of the of the shield in a dark metallic color. Um, whatever you want, just so you can see the effect as good as possible.